Blade Smiths, congratulations. You've made it into the third round of this competition, and now it's time to send you back to your home forges to recreate this iconic weapon from history. That weapon is... Charlemagne's Joyeuse. Good luck, we'll see you in four days. All right, it's day one. Today the plan is to get the blade forged out. This is definitely out of the box for me, so this will be the first sword I ever completely assemble. We're gonna start out with a bar of 1075 high carbon steel. We're gonna do a lot of the quick forging to shake with a power hammer. Whenever you try to move a big piece of metal like this, it's quite a challenge to keep it straight. Whoa. It's getting uh, long and heavy and hard to hold. So end of day one, good day. We've got the blade forged out. It's cooling down between a couple of two by sixes, so that way it doesn't warp as it cools down. Tomorrow, we'll get it ready for heat treat. I'm back here in Valentine, Nebraska, and I'm here to make Charlemagne's Joyce. Currently, I've never made a sword before. This is going to be an interesting experiment for me. So I'm going to use a big piece of 5160 bar stock. It can take a lot of damage and flex well. I want to make sure I got the length of the blade done down to a reasonable size. So this steel is definitely the most awkward thing that I've ever worked with in the shop. It's like a big, wet noodle. End of day one, I've got my blade profiled. Tomorrow, the plan is I'm going to start heat treating and get this Damascus ready for the cross guard. It's the morning of day two. Now we're going to get it ready for heat treat. The main thing is I'm definitely paying really close attention to the parameters. We're getting pretty close to coming up to temperature, so we're about five minutes away, and we'll be quenching her. All right, this is it. Eureka. All right. Well, I'm worried that hitting the bottom of the quench tank did some damage. Come on, man. I tried to fish it out, but unfortunately, I didn't catch anything. Ended up pouring it out in a five-gallon bucket in my yard. I got the blade out, so it's all good now. I did pick up a slight warp close to the tip. I should be able to straighten that out during the temper cycle. So time will tell. Morning of day three. Plan today is to grind in my fullers and get all my fittings ground down and shaped. So my biggest fear of putting in this fuller is just grinding right through my blade. I can kind of tell how close it is just by feeling it with my hand. After about an hour, the fuller is done and everything is looking good. Coming out pretty well. Now I can work on profiling the pommel and guard and getting them exactly to where I want it. For my handle, I choose diamond wood because it can take a lot of abuse and it's not going to break. I'm in the home stretch now. Tomorrow, I'm just going to be focusing on getting everything fitted and glued together. It's a good looking piece so far. Morning of day four. Uh, I got a lot of work ahead of me. My biggest focus is going to be getting the blade straight. And so I want to get that out of the way and then go from there. My solution is to extend the width of the jaws with some angle iron, heat it up, and use some wooden dowels to put the proper pressure where it needs to be. She's straight. Oh, that's so freaking awesome. Now I need to make the handle. Time's running out, so it's a race to the finish. All right, she's getting there. End of day four. Man, it's been quite a trip. Everything turned out great. A lot of hard work, but I believe it really paid off in the end. <laughs> that's a sword in four days. All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out how lethal your weapons are according to its historic design, I will take your weapon, deliver some killing slashes, and thrust on this poor carcass. Mitch, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. All right, Mitch, let's talk about your sword here. Your edge coupled with the weight that you have here allows for very deep cuts with every strike. Overall, sir, it will kill. Thank you. 
All right, Peyton, it's your turn. You ready? Oh, yeah. All right, Peyton, that was joyeuse. What I like about this sword, it's not just about the edge or the point, it's the balance of this. I can actually use some velocity and it cuts deep. Overall, sir, it will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. Now to test the strength and overall construction of your blades, I will be attacking our armored knights here. Now this is not about what your blades are gonna do to that target, about what that target's gonna do to your blades. Mitch, you're up first, you ready for this? Yes, sir. I think I just peed a little. All right, Mitch. Your edge did take some damage here. You can see the chip right there and some rolls. And your sword is heavy. <laughs> you know, this is a, a lot of weight for a single-handed sword. More in the range of a two-handed sword as far as the weight goes. But um, she held up. She's in one piece. Good job, Mitch. Thank you. All right, Peyton, you're up. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Peyton, it's weighty, but the, the weight is all back in my hand, so it doesn't feel as heavy in the blade. This sword has a much better point of balance than the other sword. Your blade did take some chips and some edge rolling, but I think you, your grinds are beautiful. The sword is all solid. You did a good job. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the sharpness test, the sandbag gauntlet. Now, to test the sharpness of your weapon, I will slash across these bags. Now, unlike the strength, this is all about how sharp your blades are and how well they cut these bags. Mitch, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, Mitch, so despite some of the damage of rolls and chips, it wasn't an issue at all in cutting these bags. It will cut. Thank you. All right, Peyton, your turn, sir. You ready? Yes, sir. Peyton, the handle construction is smooth, but will avoid enough to where I wrap my hand around it and I get a very good grip. You will cut. Thank you. Mitch, Peyton, the judge's deliberation is complete. You guys have done fantastic work on these finale weapons, but there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. Our new Forged and Fire champion is... Peyton, congratulations. You're the Forged and Fire champion. Mitch, unfortunately, your blade didn't make the cut. Mitch, you brought us a sword that performed well in all three of our tests. So this came down to the finer points of craftsmanship, as in where to place the balance point on that blade and the general weight. That balance point being so far forward made it harder to wield and harder to control, and that's why we're letting you go. I understand. Mitch, you've been a great competitor this entire competition, but at this time, I have to ask you to please surrender your blade. Obviously a little disappointed, being my first uh, sword, nothing to compare it to. I thought the weight felt good. I tried to keep the six to eight inches balance point that I was told normally swords carry. So overall, happy with what I turned in and uh, happy for Peyton. If I had to lose to anyone, I'd just soon lose to him. Peyton, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Congratulations. Please present your sword to the judges. I'm the next Forge and Fire champion. Ah, oh, it's just crazy. 
As soon as I heard my name, it was just like a weight just got pulled off my chest. Just like, oh, it's over. <laughs> Finally can breathe.